So in today's 10 minute teach and Q&A, what I'm going to talk about is your financial dashboard. So my name's Katie Crismali Marshall. I'm a certified Profit First Mastery member and the author of Profit First for Tradies. Uh, you may have heard me on my podcast, also Profit First for Tradies. So as I said, what I wanted to talk about is your financial dashboard. Now I have used Zero in my bookkeeping business for over 13 years now. So I refer to Zero all the time. If you you don't use zero, you can still follow these action steps and go through the same process in whatever system it is that you use currently. So your financial scoreboard is the dashboard of zero. This is where at a quick glance, you should be able to see exactly where your business is, who owes you money, who you owe money to and how much money is in the bank account. And this is a typical looking dashboard. And what I want to step you through is there's nine parts to this process and super simple and super quick that you can do even if you don't have any uh, understanding or very little understanding of your zero file. So what we want to do, the first point we want to check is do you have more than seven days unreconciled items in your zero file. So how do you check that? You come into your dashboard, you click on this button and you look at the date of the oldest one, which will be at the top of your screen. If there are more than uh, seven days of unreconciled items, then you would put a red there. Um, if there's, you know, maybe 10, you could put a yellow. And if there's seven or less days, you could put a green. The next step we want to do is, is the invoices owed balance correct? If we come back here, we're looking at this section here. So if you look at this and go, oh, I know I'm owed more than $25,000, or I know that there's not $20,000 overdue, then again, I want you to click into the section and it will open up your invoices and just scan through there and see, are there invoices there that you know have been paid, but they're still showing as outstanding? Um, and again, we want to then go back and we're going to create an action items list at the end of this as well. Again, red if they're, the balances look completely out to you. Yellow if you're like, mm, they're not quite right. Green if you're like, yep, that I know that's exactly who owes me money and that is correct in the system. The next one is the bills you need to pay correct. So we follow the same process down here with the bills. Do you look at this and go, yes, I have 13 bills and I know just under 9,000 is owing. Or do you look at yours and go, mm, I think there's more than that, or I think there's less than that, or I know there's nothing overdue. Again, click on there, run through the list and see what is um, owed. And is it correct? Are there bills in there that have been paid? Are there bills you know should be in there that aren't? Um, and again, we'll come back to the action list. Red, if you know it's not up to date. Yellow, if you're like, mm, it's kind of right. Green, if it's spot on. The next part of the process that we go through is, do you use a qualified BAS agent bookkeeper to lodge your BAS or are you using your tax accountant? And the reason why it's important for them to be a qualified BAS agent or a qualified tax accountant is because what I'm seeing um, now and has been consistently happening is a larger increase of people coming to us to help them with their bookkeeping and their zero files are an absolute mess. And it is often because the person doing the bookkeeping and sometimes it's themselves or their wives or partners just doesn't have a full understanding of how to do it correctly and it causes all sorts of problems. And so we always recommend that you have a fully qualified BAS agent or tax agent review and lodge your BAS. Now, if you want to do or your partner or wife wants to do the day-to-day -day reconciliation, that's perfectly okay. I would encourage you to have some training around that to make sure that it's being done correctly and also in the most efficient way. But I would want to make sure that your BAS agent or tax agent are doing a full review before they lodge every quarter. The full review ensures that everything is being done correctly, that all the cross checks are happening to make sure that everything is being tracked properly. 
Again, red, if that is a no, you're not using a basil tax agent. Yellow is a, I think so, not really sure. I'm going to check on that. Or a green is, yes, I am. I know they are. I also want to ask yourself is, uh, ask yourself the question, do you know if they're doing an amazing job? So what I find, and like anything, there are amazing people in all sorts of specialties, but sometimes there are some who have all the qualifications, but don't keep to the same standard that the industry and that we as business owners expects. So if you are not sure about your bookkeeper or your tax accountant doing an amazing job, um, again, having a look at some of these steps and if these things are out and you're paying somebody to make sure that this is all up to date, then it kind of gives you a bit of an idea that maybe we need to investigate a little bit further, have some conversations around why things aren't being done on time and why things are getting so behind. Now, please keep in mind that sometimes that is because they are waiting on information from you. And if that's the case, we just want to check back in with them and work out a process to make sure that they tell you promptly what they need from you and you provide what they need promptly back. Um, And again, red, yellow, green. And if you don't have a BAS or tax agent who is doing that for you, are you having them at least lodge it, uh, sorry, review it and lodge it as I just mentioned? Now, the next part, the last three sections here we want to look at is does your profit and loss look right? Now, I know most people don't love looking at their profit and loss or their balance sheet. And I just want to give you a really brief overview here of what I mean by does it look right? open up your profit and loss and have a look here. Simply just run your eye down here and go, okay, does this make sense? All my income is combined into a sales account, but I really would love to see, uh, for example, if you're a builder, I'd love to see where the income is coming from for new builds, renovations, insurance work. Then again, go back to your bookkeeper or accountant and ask them to have that split out so you can see that. When you're looking at your operating expenses account accounts, we want to make sure that everything is there. And when you're looking at the balances, that it makes sense. So for example, in this one, legal expenses, $4,090. Now, if you know you've not spent any money on legal expenses and you run your eye down that and go, oh, that doesn't make sense. Then again, we just go back and go, okay, what's going on here? Because it means that there's been some transactions that have put it under that category that are obviously in the wrong spot. So again, you can run your eye over those. For example, if, you know, in this instance, the telephone and internet is $190. If you know you pay $190 a month for telephone and internet and it is May, um, then that doesn't make sense. So go back, check in with them and ask them why that is the case. And again, same with the balance sheet. I know um, people love the balance sheet even less than the profit and loss. But what I want you to do is, again, run your run your balance sheet, run your eye over this one. And this, again, is a very, very basic one. And I've pulled out a bunch of information here for the example. But make sure all of your bank accounts are listed here. Make sure all of your le- uh, leases, loans, anything of uh, liabilities are listed here. What I see often is clients will tell me they've got, let's call it a vehicle loan, but it's not listed here. And that then means that there is information that's not being put in the right spot and you're not getting a really clear picture of what you owe and the state of the business. We also want to make sure that on here as well, depending on the entity that you are, so whether you're a sole trader, partnership, company, trust, etc., um, that you may have a category here that is called drawings. It may be called director's loan. It may be loan and your name. It might have owner's loan. There's some variations there to what it could be called. But if you have any of those on there, I want you to just take the time to contact your accountant and just ask them, what does that mean? Does it mean I owe the business money or does it mean the business owes me money? And have a conversation around that because what I have consistently seen over the last sort of year, 18 months, maybe a little bit longer is that we have uh, director's loans or drawings listed here 
and the client has no idea what that means. And there can be a number of different tax implications and just implications on the business in general. So please have a look for that and make sure you ask the accountant about that one as well, just to update you, let you know what it is, why it's there. And the question, do I owe the business money or does the business owe me money? And get clarification on that because the last thing we want is to have any negative tax implications down the track and that's a good one just to double check um, there's other areas that can go wrong as well but that is one I've been seeing a lot of recently as I said so I'm highlighting that for you now so again when we come here we want to read it doesn't look right I've got loans that aren't on there I've got a director's loan balance I have no idea what it means that'll be a red Yellow, I've got some things on there, but the things can't, aren't quite right. Green, everything look, looks amazing. All the balances, all the loans, everything is correct. Um, statistically, it's unlikely that this would be green, just in my experience from what I have seen. And as I said here, talking about the director's loan, the drawings there as well. Um, red, if there's an amount on there that you've got no idea what it is. Yellow, if you're like, mm, not sure. And green, if there is none of those on the balance sheet for you. So what I want you to do is take, open your zero file and just step through these nine points and have a look at your zero file. And again, if you want to download this and rank these, um, otherwise you can just jot it down on a piece of paper. And from there, once you've got your um, red, yellow or green, you can take those points back to your accountant, your bookkeeper, whoever's doing the bookkeeping for you and say, hey, can we please sit down and work out why there's so many unreconciled transactions or why my invoices um, don't show these all my clients or why there's bills in there that I've already paid. And you can step through each one of these and get those sorted out. And that then means your financial dashboard, that very first screen in zero, is going to be up to date and give you a much clearer idea of where you are. Um, and it means that then you can stress less because you know if you come to your dashboard, it is correct. And then you can that can help make you just make help you make decisions in your business. And finally, what I just wanted to finish off with, I like to keep things pretty simple um, and efficient. My clients will know that. Profit first for tradies on your various platforms. If Instagram's your thing, if you like listening to podcasts, if you prefer Facebook, I've got a group and a page. And if you want to reach out and ask any questions on what I've covered net today or any other profit first questions or bookkeeping questions, then please feel free to email support at profitfirstfortradies.com.au and I will happily point you in the right direction from there.